Yes. How how you are doing? Good. Great. Uh, I've got like about thirty minutes to do this, but I think I will spend around fifteen minutes because the brother coming behind after me is Mond, and Mond we need another twenty to thirty minutes to summarize the message. So I will try to spend more time for Mond to to have all the time. Uh, it's good to be here again this morning. The last time I was here, or the last time I preached, I was just uh, a wonderful husband to a beautiful wife. But today, I'm not just a husband. Uh, I'm a father to an amazing daughter as well. And uh, maybe the next time I'm going to be preaching, I'll be father of two. Uh, you need to see my wife's face now. She's about to kill me. <laughs> Yeah, let's get into the business of today. That's not where I'm going to. That's just an introduction. <laughs> right. Now, the thing for the church this year is perseverance. And for the couple of weeks ago, I mean, brothers have been coming around sharing great messages from God about perseverance or something related to perseverance. However, you allow me to take a bit drift away from the thing as I have something different to share with us this morning. This is from my devotion, one of my personal devotion on my own personal growth and which I elaborated, elaborated on. Amen. Great. I want you to read this with me. If you mean to guard your heart, you must first learn to befriend your tongue. If you mean to guard your heart, you must first befriend your tongue. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this great evening that you've given to us, the opportunity to give it to us to come together as a church. Uh, we thank you for all that is going on around us and how you've protected us so far. God. We thank you for your blessings, the one we can see and the one we cannot see. We thank you for your protection once again over our family back home and here. God, we thank you for bringing us here to learn from you, to listen to your word. But I beg of you that you speak through me, God. Take away all my self from me. Take away my pride. Take away my skill. But God, speak through me. God. Let your church be encouraged and be inspired, God. Thank you. We love you. God, we use this time to pray for Ukraine and Russia. But God, please, let your peace reign, God. I know your Bible says you have the heart, you hold the heart of all the kings. I know there is nothing you cannot do. Just touch individuals' heart and let them discuss peace, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, I pray thanks be. Amen. If you mean to guard your heart, you must first learn to befriend your tongue. You see, there are so many questions you can pick from this line, this word. There's so many questions. You can think about it. What is the relationship between my heart and my tongue? Right? If the first thing I need to do to be able to guard my heart is to befriend my tongue, how powerful or what amount of influence do you think my tongue has got over my heart? If I ask you today and say, what is the most important part of your body? You guys have uh, so many answers. So majority will say the heart, because once the heart stops doing its business, we're literally gone, right? But as powerful and as important our heart is, also rely on another part of the body, which is our tongue. So how, how powerful and what kind of influence is my tongue? Over my heart. Now we will look at it from two different angles this evening, from a scientific angle and the scriptural angle. Are you ready? So let's go first to the to the Bible. James 1:26 said, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Now think about it. Uh, whatever you believe, whatever your conviction, the Bible says, if you fail to keep a tight ring 
on your tongue. You deceive yourself and your religious would not. What is, what is the tyrant? This is it. For, for those, for those who knows about horse riding, this is when, when this talk control every part of the horse to go, to stop. Now, this is the NIV translation, but let's look at NLT, what NLT said. James 1, the same James 1, 26, in Living Living Translation, they said, if you claim to be I am fooling myself and my religion is worthless. Let's go and look at what signs talk about our tongue. Now, this is the part of our brain here. This is our brain here. And this red part of our brain is called the broca area. Now, one fact is this, this the broca area is also what we call the speech center in our brain. Now, this speech center is right by the left side of your brain and it has total dominion it has total control over all other nerves in the body the entire nerves this red angle this red it's got total control over every other part of our body in fact the nerves on the tip of our tongue are directly connected to the brainstem a core part of our body, of our brain, that direct basic bodily process. This is, this is so important. The, 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 the nerve on the tips of our tongue. So for example, I'll tell you how it works. For example, if, you keep, if I keep saying to myself, I cannot do this, I am too weak, I don't have the strength, I, I, I will fail, I am not capable of doing this. It says yet that, Immediately, the nerves will receive the message. They will receive the message from the central nervous system, and then they will believe they are weak. So they automatically, your body starts doing things like you are weak, like you cannot do it. Then you start failing because there's a connection between your speech center, your broker area, and the other nerves of your body that keep things working. How powerful. Is it now? This is from the science side. The Bible actually connected this and even confirmed this. James 3 2. It says, Anyone who anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. They are able to keep their whole body in check. Look at how the elders translated it. It said, For if we can control our tongues will be perfect, and we can also control ourselves in every other way. Connect the, the facts above and the scripture. So if we can control our tongues, we will actually be perfect, and we'll be able to control ourselves in every other way. Proverbs confirm the same thing. Proverbs said, gracious words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. And there are many questions. There are, so many, there are so many scriptures in the Bible that proves this. If you look at Proverbs, in fact, almost, not all, almost all the chapters in Proverbs say something about tongues, about words, about listening. Almost all the scriptures, almost all the chapters in Proverbs prove it or say something about our tongue, about the words that come up from a warning about what we say and what we think about. So the question is this, what does this mean to me as a believer, as a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus Christ? All this old story, all this old fact about our tongues, about the power of our tongues, about what James analyzed in 32, about if he can take control of our tongue and have everything. What does it really mean for me as a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's it. Our tongue is capable of directing the course of our life. And I'll read it again. Our tongue is capable 
of, of directing the course of our life. See, if I continually speak negative, if I continually say, I cannot do it. If I continually speak fear, doubt into my life, then I will continue to live in fear, doubt, and even in defeat. Think about it. If I continually, if I continually talk about my problems, if I continually talk about my sickness, if all I say is about my failure, for singles, if all I say is about our lack of relationship in the church, if that is all I talk about, then I will continue to live in those problems because that is everything about me. But if I take over, if I take control over my tongue and I begin to fill my mouth with the word of God, and I begin to fill my mouth with the powerful word of God, if I begin to speak positive words into my life, guess what? I will continue to live in positivity. That is the fact. Our tongue, as tiny and as small as it is, it is capable of directing because of our life. So I want you to ask yourself this morning, this evening, not morning. Think about it. Ask yourself these questions. What is that problem in my life that I need to stop addressing as a problem? Think about it. What are those challenges or hindrances in my life that I need to stop addressing as challenges and hindrances? Right? What are those negative thoughts that I need to change to positive thought. In fact, guess what? And I, and I, this, this, is, this, is, this is tricky. If you read down the book of James, James 3, 7 or 8, he even confirmed it that there is no human being that can actually control his or her tongue. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Uh, we should control our tongue. But James confirmed it, he said, there is nobody that can control or that can tame is our tongue. So what does that mean? That means that I, I need to continuously be careful of how I use my tongue. I need to continue this to be alert on how I use my tongue. And that leads me to the final point of tonight here. Yeah. As a Christian, how have I been using my tongue? As a disciple of Jesus Christ, at my place of work, with my family, with my friends, how have I been using my tongue? I call it the inconsistency of tongue. And look at how James put it. James 3, 7 to 10. He said, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. Verse 8, he said, but there is no human being that can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Now, now, now this is where we're going to now. And I want you to read this now carefully. It says, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God likeness. He said, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Read that now again. He said, with the same tongue, I praise our Lord and Father. See, the same tongue I used to curse the same God's creation. Out of the same mouth, I praise the same mouth called. Even if you read down 11, he said, can, can, can this and this come up? No. It should not be. Now, you may be thinking about it. When, when, when James is talking about cause here, what, what do you think he's talking about? I did, I did a little bit. I said, it, in, in Greek, it's called katarometer. No, see the second one? I can't pronounce it, so spare me. <laughs> now, what, what does this mean? So the, the word cause here, the katarometer here in Greek, it, 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 it is a specific term. It's different from what we think causing. See, 
So when James used the word curse here, he is not referring to quarrels or dirty jokes. That is not what he's referring to. What James is saying here is that another, when we condemn another person, that's what James is talking about. It is when we wish them to be cut off from blessing. Basically, it can mean when we pray evil to be left, to befall other people. Now, now, we do this a lot in my country, in Nigeria. I don't know whether I, yeah, we pray, God kill my enemy, God kill my enemy, God throw my enemy to this, God condemn my enemy, and all this stuff. Generally, the type of cousin that James is referring to is when we desire evil on another man come. That's what he's saying. Here. So how do I say I love God? And at the same time, I say I hate my brother or my sister or my neighbor. How? When 1 John 4.20 says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brothers and sisters whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and sisters. How have I been using my tongue to bless God? And at the same time, using the same tongue to bring down my brothers and sisters. How have I been using my tongue to say, hey man, God name me praise. And half that, I say, I, oh my goodness, I dislike that guy, oh my God. I can't, I don't even know how he said, I, I, I can't believe he's existed. <laughs> how? There are good standards in the scripture, in the Bible, concerning how Christian, or the speech that comes out from Christian. See, if you, if you, if you read Matthew 5, 43 to 45, you say, you have heard what that is said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. The Bible says, love them and pray for them, not curse them, not condemn them. They persecute me. But I should still pray for them. That's what Jesus Christ said. That's what the Bible said. In fact, Apostle Paul confirmed the same thing in Ephesians 4.29. He said, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Get rid of all bitterness. What causes me to use my mouth to curse somebody else. That's what he's saying. He said, get rid of all bitterness, all rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with any form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. If I portray all this quality in verse 32, it will be difficult for me to use my mouth to curse another person. If I'm cognizant of 31 and 32, they say, see, if you really want to guard your tongue, if you really want to protect your tongue, to get rid of all bitterness, all hatred, anger, slander, malice. Man, I'm speaking to myself, but I'm full of all this. Anger, I'm number one. To get, get rid, just get rid of all this. Be kind and compassionate. Try to understand from others' point of view. Listen. Forgive when they hurt you. And just as in Christ, God forgive you. I have an exercise for us this week. If you can do it tonight, that is fine. If you can find the time this week. Couples, you can do it together, husband and wife. Singles, you can grab somebody on a coffee. You guys can go and spend time. But I want you to do this exercise. Do you have your pen or you can take a screenshot? The number one is this. I want you to discuss. How have I been blessing God with my words? 
and at the same time causing its creation. I want to think in it, you need to think deeply. And I want, I want us to have a honest answer. It's a discussion between one on one, one to what do you say? How do you call it? One on one or one to one? Ask yourself, how have I been blessing God with my words? And at the same time, causing his creation. Number two, are my words filled with encouragement, love, praise? Or they are filled with negativism, discouragement, criticism. Think deeply about what you use, what, what you what you've been saying and ask yourself, are my words, are they filled with encouragement, love, praise, or are they filled with negativism, criticism? No, nothing is good. There must be one fault. Is that you? Number three, when I face pressure at work with family, what, when I feel something that feels like it's an unrealistic demand, do I speak out of frustration? In my relationship with church members, what type of words are you speaking? Complain? Criticize? Finding fault? Or encouragement? What, what, what kind of things I say all the time? With my church brothers and sisters, am I the type who always complain about how it's not going well? Oh my goodness, that message is not perfect. Oh, this criticism, finding fault, or encouraging. Last one, when a brother or a sister stumbles and falls, do I use my tongue to lift them up? or cut them down. When the brothers and sisters fall, stumble, when I use my words, my tongue, to leave them, to bring them back, or to cut them down. Now, we need, we need to ask ourselves this question, this last question very well, as a church. So I, I want you to have this discussion with whoever your partner is. And don't be discouraged, please. If these areas, or you're having difficulties in most of this, don't be discouraged. Open up, talk to your partner, pray together, and ask them to hold you accountable on how to better use your tongue. I will do the same thing with my wife. I want you to do this because it's gonna help us on how we use our tongue. See, if, if, I, if I can continue to talk about the power of tongue, and I'm sure you all have a hundred percent knowledge about the power. I mean, some people have read books about the power of tongue. It is very powerful. I know. But the tricky part of it is that how am I using this tongue? Not how powerful it is, but personally, me. How have I been using my tongue to uplift others or to bring others down? To bless God. And at the same time, to curse my neighbor. To praise God. And at the same time, to dislike God's creation. How have I been using my tongue? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this evening. Thank you for your word. Thank you for a reminder. I know personally, this is a personal message for me because one of my devotions about a couple of months ago. And I'm grateful for how you've used this devotion to really help me, mostly when I was facing difficult time at my work, to be more positive, to see my colleague not as a problem, but as my friend. And the outcome of it today is very clear in my family how much I've, uh, I've been loved by my colleagues how far they've gone to ensure that my, con my visa is renewed. But I'm grateful for the, for the result of this division. But I beg you that my brothers and sisters who listening this evening also, that this message is gonna be impactful in their life. 
that they will reflect on those questions because they are, they, they are questions that deal with our day-to-day -day life. And God, you will be a better person. God. And for those who, who have been able to control their tongue or who are doing well in this aspect, that you continue to keep them strong, God. And for some of us who are weak, who have been blessing you with our tongue and at the same time cursing our neighbor, God, you forgive us and you help us to, to go the right side, God. Thank you once again, God. I pray for the country, Russia and Ukraine. I pray for our brothers and sisters in this, church, in this country and everyone at large, God. You protect them in the middle of this chaos and God, you let peace reign, God. That you touch the heart of individual leaders and they will be able to come to an agreement, God. Thank you, everlasting God. We pray for uh, Rodel and, and Gweiser as the days keep approaching that you grant them safe delivery, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanksgiving. Amen.